What are you doing? If I keep changing my facial expressions, he won't be able to recognize me in a lineup. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest peacemaker moments. Oh, peacemaker! Yes. You're that racist superhero! Oh. For this list, we're looking at the most gut-busting scenes and lines from the first season of this hysterical DCEU show. Mild spoilers to follow. What do you think of the show so far? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, the intro. Nowadays, with the advent of streaming, hitting that skip intro button can be a tantalizing offer. Yet few shows have an intro sequence as re-watchable as Peacemaker's. Set to Wigwam's Do You Wanna Taste It, the musical number sees main and supporting characters alike get down. There's something about the rigidly ludicrous moves coupled with the absolutely stoic faces that hits our funny bones every time. James Gunn content almost always has some niche yet apt song selections, and the series makes sure to remind us of that from the get-go. Still, we like to think that if Peacemaker himself were to direct his own musical number, it'd look a little something like this. Number 9. Vigilante Blows His Cover Adrian Chase, aka Vigilante, definitely takes the superheroing gig way too seriously. And part of that comes with protecting his secret identity. Well, poorly, we should say. After Peacemaker goes to visit his incarcerated father, it doesn't take Adebayo very long to connect the dots. Well, he has to do what he has to do, I guess. I take it you're Vigilante. No? It's a brief moment, but one that brilliantly subverts the tropes of secret identities, as voice recognition is and should always be a dead giveaway to identifying the face behind the mask. Why are you limping? Snowboarding accident, totally unrelated in any way to Vigilante. I don't even know who Vigilante is. Who is he? Though this is undoubtedly the Peacemaker show, Freddie Stroma's performance has made Vigilante a serious breakout character, one we can always rely on to provide comedic relief in a pinch. You ain't killing it right now. Ugh. Number 8. Intimidating the Vets Dude, they saw us. Peacemaker and I are wanted. What other choice do we have besides killing this veterinarian, this nurse, and this male nurse? You could just say two nurses, man. If I just say nurse, I think people will imagine it as a woman. He's standing right there. We don't have to imagine anything. Vigilante's nascent sociopathy has given us a plethora of hysterical moments so far, but few as good as this one. After the crew takes eagerly to an animal clinic for some urgent medical work, Vigilante is resolved to take out the vets, convinced they know too much. Thankfully, no one else is quite as game for that. Curiously, though, Vigilante does have empathy for tape-induced injuries. We can't use duct tape. That'll hurt their skin when they try to pull it off. Where are you going? Just to call my wife. Tell her I'm on my way back. So you're compassionate about tape, but not brutally murdering people? Yes. Later, after the team gets briefed on the imminent mission to take out the giant alien cow of sorts, they get a few surprising volunteers. I'm in. Hashtag me too. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do this. No. I think you need to calm down. You can't come with us. Sure you don't need the help? No, you just die. Sadly, the prospective agents don't get to join the fun, but at least they don't get tied up with duct tape. Surprisingly nice people considering. Except for the guy in the blue. Yeah, that dude's a mess. Number seven, Eagly Hunts for Peacemaker. Speaking of breakout characters, Peacemaker's best friend and pet eagle Eagly always has us wondering what humorous thing the big bird will do. But even we didn't expect this. After Peacemaker dispatches his first butterfly with the sonic boom feature in his helmet, Eagly decides to reward him with some fresh possum. Thanks, Eagly. We were already sold by this point, but this is still a pretty good joke to end the first episode on, and one that's revisited in the second. What the hell? The report said an explosion. 
How'd the possum stay intact? Solidifying one of the weirdest running jokes we can think of, Eagley makes sure to cheer up Peacemaker a few episodes later with a tasty squirrel. It's very meaningful to me, but no. No. I'm not gonna eat it. You can have it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I saw. Number six, fart sounds. I know I'm the last person that you wanna hear from right now, Chris, and I can't... <laughs> There comes a time in our lives when we realize that making farting sounds with your mouth isn't as funny as it was when we were kids. And then Peacemaker and Vigilante start up and we're back to square one. <laughs> Feeling betrayed that Adebayo planted an incriminating diary in his trailer to serve Amanda Waller's agenda, Peacemaker understandably doesn't want to hear her apology. But it's the way he and Vigilante go about drowning her out that has us in stitches. What are you gonna say? I was saying. The energy and outright silliness John Cena and Freddy Stroma bring to nearly every scene is downright infectious, whereas James Gunn proves that he can make even the most immature joke feel like highbrow humor. Are you guys serious right now? We just had a really sick time murdering Peacemaker's dad and all these hilarious fart jokes, just like an all-time classic run with my best friend, my second best friend, Eagly, my fifth best friend, Adebayo, and now you guys are ruining it. Number five, arguing with Jamil. Jamil. I don't have any weed on me, man. That was it's a one time thing. The doctor said I was free to go. Congratulations. One of the most utilized scenes for the show's marketing campaign was the exchange between Peacemaker and a hospital janitor. And for good reason, it's downright hilarious. After Peacemaker gets discharged from the hospital following his Suicide Squad misadventures, he probes the friendly janitor Jamil for intel, and their conversation goes to some weird places from Aquaman's sexual orientation to Peacemaker's blind trust for things he reads on the internet. Guy on Twitter works for the aquarium, said for 50 bucks he brings him in the back so he can have his way with a sturgeon. I refuse to believe that. And I refuse to believe that at Pepe the Frog 89 is lying to me for no reason. Still, the funniest moment has to come when Jamil questions Peacemaker's profiling issues. If somebody's committing a crime, yes. am I supposed to control what their ethnicity is? No, but you need to watch white people as closely as you watch people of color so you see more of them committing crimes. Fine, that's, that's a good point. I will trust white people less in the future and kill a higher percentage of them. Are you satisfied? We don't get a lot of Jamil in the first season of Peacemaker, but with Rizwan Manji's impeccable comedic timing, we'd love to see more. Number four eagerly hugs Peacemaker. Another moment that was highly marketed but has more legs in the actual show is Eagly's adorable affection for Peacemaker. Dad, grab my phone, I don't wanna move. Dad? When Peacemaker reunites with Eagly in the first episode, his feathered sidekick is so happy he wraps his wings around him in a hugging gesture. Peacemaker, however, is unable to prove it to anyone. You know who's so happy to see me today he wrapped his wings around me and hugged me? An eagle hugged you. Yeah, I call bullshit on that. You don't want to believe in miracles, that's on you. In an even more touching moment in Episode 7, however, Peacemaker seemingly prays eagerly back to full health, after which the bird gives him another embrace, this time in full view of Adebayo. Thankfully, this time Peacemaker also has his phone, so he's able to capture the moment in all its patriotic glory. <laughs> Number 3. Two Types of Babies while Peacemaker, real name Chris, has excellent taste in glam metal music, he seems to be largely ignorant or otherwise naive about the world around him. After he's prepped on the mission to assassinate a family of butterflies disguised as humans, Peacemaker expresses newfound misgivings about his mantra regarding killing however many men, women, and children needed to attain peace. What is it, just trust us and shoot kids? Come on, man, look how adorable that one is. The other one, not so much. It's got like a children of the corn vibe going on. However, one of the kids looks an awful lot like a butt baby to him. A butt baby. Yeah, my older brother told me there's two types of babies. One that comes out of a woman's vagina, normal. And then butt babies, worse in every way, they come out of a woman's butt. You know, I believed I was a butt baby until I was like 14. That explains a lot. Likely due to his brother Keith's untimely death, Chris clearly never learned not to believe everything he said, giving us this hysterical moment. If butt babies did exist, though, we'd like to think Peacemaker isn't one. Like two. I suspected you were a butt baby from the beginning. Number two, people who should be in jail. 
The jokes in Peacemaker are definitely dragged out further than those of your average superhero show. But with material as great as this, we're definitely not complaining. After Peacemaker learns Economist arranged for Peacemaker's dad Augie to be imprisoned in his place, Peacemaker, in frustration, rattles off an endless series of people who could have been framed instead. And the names he comes up with are hysterical. Yes. What about Ariana Grande or Drake? What? Brad Pitt or Payne Stewart or Doug the Pug? Khloe Kardashian, the Red Tiger from Voltron. If anyone has ever doubted John Cena's talents as a comedic actor, they need only watch this scene. Danny DeVito, Will Ferrell, Howard Stern, Baba Booey, Robin Ophelia, Quivers, Alice Cooper, Ozzy Osbourne, Sharon Osbourne, Bill Cosby, he just got out, he's got time on his hands. Thankfully, the show makes sure to show extended clips at the ends of each episode, so those who sat through the credits of this one definitely got some more Cena goodness. Seth Myers. What about Seth Myers, or for that matter, Jay Leno? Conan's not really doing much right now. All right, most of those, you're right, could probably go to prison, but I would never put Ariana Grande in there. She looks too innocent. Possibly true. Possibly. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Vigilante Interrogated. Peacemaker's ostensible indifference to Vigilante's torture is as funny as it is shocking. Does yeah. that change your mind? Sorry, pal. Not for sale. <laughs> What? Give it all you got! No, 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 no! Ah! Calling out Batman. Peacemaker and the Caped Crusader definitely have different rules. He's a dark creature of the night! He's a jackass! Who wrestles with murderers dressed like clowns and throws them in prison! <laughs> so they can break out of prison and then murder more people! Parking lot fight. Peacemaker's rematch with Judo Master ends in unceremonious fashion. These martial artists, they are hardcore. Their heart stops beating, they just concentrate and move a kidney up into its place, and the kidney circulates the blood through the system. No, that's not something that happens. Only the greats, just a few times. No, this never happened ever. Yeah, it has. One or two times it has. Yes, no questions. Vigilante doesn't really understand how to communicate with a butterfly. Goff, what's your favorite color? Dude, it's, it's yes or no questions, I just said it. <laughs> right, okay, yeah. Uh, Goff, is your favorite color teal? Bro, what the f PowerPoint presentation. Economist's PowerPoint skills could use some tweaking. What's the chimp for? Chimpanzees have four times the strength of human beings, so they're both strong. Yeah, and we're supposed to get that just by looking at this die beard? I thought that man and the chimp were friends. I was thinking they were about to go on an adventure together. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Show and Tell Though it doesn't have too much bearing on the plot, James Gunn was able to reincorporate Jamil by having Peacemaker act as his daughter's uncle on Show and Tell Day at school. And it goes about as poorly as you'd expect. Have you ever met The Flash? Yeah, I met The Flash. Like everybody else has ever met him, I thought it was an unbearable D-bag. With Peacemaker giving the youngsters a slew of mean nicknames before inappropriately answering their questions, the characters cover a wide range of topics, from Justice League members to eagerly. Yeah, Canadian tuxedo. Do you have a pet? I do have a pet. It's a great question. I have a pet named Eagly. He's an eagle. Uh, yeah, Rubik's Cube World Champion 2025. Why is your pet's name so unoriginal? Why are you my least favorite kid in this class? The scene does tease the details of Keith's death, but it otherwise remains a humorous tone throughout, wrapping up with a possible parentage reveal. Skeddy arms. Did you know Becky Coolidge? Becky Coolidge. That's my mom. She used to bartend in the Starlight Lounge. Becky Coolidge, yeah, that's right. I haven't seen her in like 10 years. <laughs> I think you might be my real dad. What? In any case, Peacemaker makes for a memorable show and tell guest. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.